Jobs were harder then, I suppose, but it was a pretty good life. The new arbitration court had just given us a living wage. Two pounds eight, it was. But you could get a pound of steak for tuppence. And a tram ride cost a penny. So did a newspaper, where we read stories like that one in March 1913. Today, the site of the federal capital will be named. The city which will be the centre of all that is best and finest in the national life. Not all the newspapers of the day agreed with this. The capital in the bush is a folly the Commonwealth will regret. It is a city initiated in a lot of mummery and make-believe. Blackbeard and Mr. King O'Malley, the Minister for Home Affairs, stood indeed like a king, as he represented the Commonwealth with the Prime Minister, Mr. Andrew Fisher, in top hat and frock coat. The Governor-General, Lord Denman, laid the foundation stone of the national capital. From the telegraphic tent, the thousands of words of the speeches were flashed across the wires. At midday, Lady Denman spoke. I name the capital of the Commonwealth, Canberra. The Attorney General, Mr. William Modest Hughes, was cheerfully optimistic about the city to be built in the open spaces of New South Wales. An area of 900 square miles had become Commonwealth territory. Canberra was to stand for the nation.